to add the little tiny dots on foil. And if you don't have a foil, don't worry because you can do this. You will take a piece of paper, you fold it in a half like this. You're going to paint on one half and then you press. Then we paint here again and we press. Foil is better because it doesn't absorb the color. On the other hand, if you print like that, you're going to have two prints to paint on. So it really depends on you. We'll be adding color after color after color. The, the first result will be looking like this, or maybe like this, maybe like that. And later we're going to paint over. Adding flowers, adding stems, and nothing is going to be very realistic. We can make uh, another day very realistic painting like hickory flowers or like uh, violet, but it's not for today. It's, it's like if you want to do it, we do it next time. And later when you're done with your painting and you print first, you're going to add with your pencil little pollinators flying here and there because if these are bushes or trees, fruits are going to grow. So pollinators are important, right? So we're ready to start. And as I said, because some people join us later, you really need red, yellow, and blue. That's it. And white. These are the all colors that you need. So are we ready to start? I think can I, so. Can I use watercolor paints? Absolutely. I'm using these because, uh, because I want to show you the essence. I assume all of you have watercolor paints. And by the way, I tell you something. I'm always messing up and mixing colors here. But you have to use this. Plastic. Uh, paper will work. I use dishes. So yes, you could use watercolor. This would be the best option, but I will be focused on mixing. So this is my piece of foil and I'm going to use large brush. However, you can paint even with your fingers. Let's go with green. If you don't, if you have ready green, use it. But with watercolor, what is good is good is good to add to your green. It's very dirty, but I promise it's green. To add a little bit of yellow, so it's lighter green, and later a little bit of blue, so it's darker, cooler green. So it's a lot of yellow, a lot of yellow. Then I wash my brush because I don't want to make. Uh, my blue dirty and I'm adding some blue and I really want very very light green so I'm adding more yellow and I'm making dots I can make them like this I think they're even more interesting but it's going to spread anyway so I have plenty of yellow greenish dots. If they're very, very watery, they spread more. So when I'm done with this, and you can have, you can have more in certain areas because there's more, maybe more lighter grasses. This is the bottom of our, our painting. And I take paper, any paper that I have, I touch, and I'm getting my first print. And this is monoprint. And monoprint means it's the only single print. There is no print like this one, single one. That's what I've got. Then I'm washing my brush again and I'm adding more blue. And I'm getting different green. And I'm going to add even more. I take, I put my paper on the side 
and randomly, very randomly, um, I'm touching the paper. And usually all the meadows are kind of similar at the bottom, right? Grasses are similar, but they might be concentration of darker grasses or darker stems. Uh, you don't have to follow me, but we are putting uh, our grass not in a half, but let's say one third or two thirds of the paper. Let's divide it like this way, not exactly in a half. Okay, and I'm going to print again. So it'll be many prints. Here we go. Oh, my meadow looks more and more interesting. So I'm creating green again, yellow. It's a Do you know why I'm speeding sometimes? Because it's like taking notes. You want to say something quickly and jump to the next subject before you forget what you were trying to say or sell your idea. So it's quick sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's about communication. So it's good to know how to make quick sketches because it can translate to other areas of life. And this is my biggest problem, by the way. Okay, maybe I go with a little tiny dots a little higher where the flowers are growing. Just very tiny dots, not too big, very tiny. So here we go. They will work for leaves. My print can look like this. In just a moment, do I have any samples? Here, I was doing this with Amadeus. Maybe, maybe we need more green at the bottom. It can look like the bottom. I'm talking only, only about the bottom. It can look like this. Remember, yours doesn't have to be like mine. No, it doesn't. It can look like this. Or it can look like this. Of course, we didn't do flowers yet. By the way, do you see how strong the red ones are? Maybe too strong? I don't know. This is more subtle. So, you know, there are so many different ways of making these dots. So maybe I create very mellow green. And I add more and I see how it's going to change. Just to experiment. So I fill the bottom with more green, but it, it still has some texture. I'm not painting it over, right? So if I spoil it, it's okay. It'll be just different. So I'm adding more because I want to fill more space. And here we go, we'll see. And that's what I have. And I'm going to stay with this. I wash my brush really, really well. And I wash it again in my cleaner container. And I want to get some yellow flowers. So look, I'm taking my yellow you can do it with your you can do it with your 
watercolor because I'm sure you have watercolor, not the tempera. I wash my brush really, really well in dirty water and then in clean water, cleaner one. I dry it and I take tiny amount of red because I want to have warmer yellow, but not orange. Still yellow, it's too orangey, so I have to add more yellow. And I'm going to make, and I think this is the yellow that I'm happy. And do you see difference? This is very cold yellow. This is warmer one. And I'm going to add center for daisies. I'm going to have many of them. You can spread it evenly. Or you can put them here or there. It's really your above the green it's really your choice this will be huge if i think it'll be too much i can take dry brush and somehow remove the amount of of paint so you can play with accident or you can do whatever you want i'm going to pull the next print This will be probably huge dots, but it's okay. Here they are. Now I want orangey flowers. So I'm going to add red again, but more. So my red is here. And I'm adding, and if you start painting by mistake here, it's okay. But remember, we're working on monoprint. So I know I have remnants of yellow, so I'm going to put some orangey flowers between. Maybe one here. So my orangey flowers are here, and my next pool. Here we go. So it's an entire process, as you see. Here we go. I have some orange, yellow. Let's say these are the centers of the flowers or flowers by itself. I'm washing my brush and I'm taking a lot of red and I'm creating very warm red. And if I want to change it a little bit, I add tiny amount of blue, but only tiny because we don't want purple, not yet. And I'm adding red dots. They can be huge or they can be tiny. This is your choice. So do it, make it your way. And if you are the only one Having something that is completely different, that's okay. You don't want to be like everyone else, right? Okay, so maybe I put too many because these are strong. So they will probably jump, but maybe I want them strong. I don't know. Here we go. So I have some reds. Hickory flower. It's slightly purplish, right? So I'm going to take with my cleaner brush, white. Oh, you see that's remnant of red, but it's okay. White. I'm going to add a little bit of red. Maybe even more. But I don't want pink. So I will add blue. And this is really nice purple. And I don't want this, and it's very watery, and I really don't want them to be too big. So my dots will be very tiny.
And I really want to fill the stage with flowers. So I go to the top. And at the bottom as well. Think more about the composition. Not the real, not the real meadow. And you will get a real meadow anyway. Print again. We could do everything at once, but it's fun to build it, I think. Oh, I'm curious. And there are flowers that I was talking with Amadeus today called Forget Me Not. Amadeus shared with me that this is the flower of Alaska, correct, Amadeus? We have yep. to check it. Yep, it's, it's correct. Very, very light. But I'm going to make them darker so you will see them. Otherwise, you're not able to see them at all. So they will be darker, but I'm going to make smaller dots. So forget me not. They are very, they're not very tall, but it's an abstract painting. So we make them, maybe, maybe this hill is going up. Maybe there is a hill, right? So they are on the top of the hill. So I'm adding here uh, and there, you know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling the space. So here we go again, I pull, I press and I pull and I'm done. And I think I leave it like that. And I'm going to stop my recording. These are beautiful. These are really beautiful. And you know what's great? They all different. And this is the best. And you see, this is supposed to be my clean water and this is supposed to be my dirty water. It didn't work. So don't repeat my mistakes. And I know myself, that's why, look, it's very handy. Just in case. I prepared more water container. So how are we going to make a uh, uh, to make uh, flowers. There's one beautiful brush and I think it's better to invest in the less paints but good brush. And I show you, it's called Filbert and I want to show you how it works because sometimes brush does the job for you. So look, this is the center and it's yellow. And this brush, Works well, like this. It does the petal when my regular brush works like this. So it's slightly different, right? But I can do something else. I can use my brush like this. So, you know, you can force your brush to do your job for you. But in this case here, we're just going to do this. We're not going to, we're going to work fast and, and, and we want to create impression of the meadow. We, 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 we do not try to create specific flowers, at least not today. So grab your brush and do whatever you feel and have fun. So um, I think I'm going to create marigold. So it has this orangey purple petals. I will be adding them here and there. Oh, sorry, mistake. 
before I go to marigolds and all that stuff, we need stems, of course. So yellow. And blue. And create this kind of green that you really, really like a lot. And with your thinnest brush, or not necessarily, you're going to paint stems. You can make them vertical, slightly slanted, thin, thick. Whatever you feel. So we need many, many stems. And because we have many colors here, some stems will be lighter, some stems will be darker. So I'm adding more yellow to have lighter green. And I'm adding lighter stems, stems and leaves, because we need leaves as well. And for leaves, sometimes the touch of the brush, just a moment, maybe I do it with a darker green so you can see better. Sometimes just the touch of the brush and the brush does the job for you. And the leaves, they don't have to be attached to stems. As I said, it's, it's, it's a very, it's abstract painting. Whenever you put them, they will be fine, but they will be done in more organized way than our background. So try adding them. And how the leaves are growing. This is very interesting because if you have a stem, the flower, like this, sometimes leaves go, leaves go like this. Sometimes they're growing like that. And sometimes there is a little stem growing from the stem and the leaves are growing like this. You decide what you do. So we're adding leaves, stems, grasses. Sometimes they can go up. Do we feel like this? It really depends. how you see your art. And the top can be purely abstract in any color you want. So don't think that you have these three and nothing else. You can mix them. So I'm thinking about dark purple. So I have to add more blue. And we have all the colors and probably you would ask me how can I live without brown? Using these three, you can make brown. Of course, you can mix black with red, but having these three, you can make different shades and tons of, of brown. So 
but we don't need brown here unless you want to. If I want to show Daisy, which has yellow center and white petals, then I'm going to do something what I shouldn't. I'm going to mix directly on white. And I add tiny amount of blue. Very, very tiny, a little bit of red. Because I want to get this off white color. that will be visible on a white background. So I don't know if you can see it. But you can, you can experiment. Sometimes your dots can be just single flowers and you don't have to add any petals. Maybe there's no need for this. And I want to show you some pieces that were done earlier like this. Like that, here flowers are big, or like this, or like that. And here petals are green. I don't think, I think there are some flowers with green petals. I think I've seen them in uh, Bronx Botanical Garden. So there is no way to say that something is correct or not. This is, everything is, everything is okay. So I can take very big, bold brush and make really huge flowers. Here somehow I've got brown, probably all these three colors mix in one place and I've got brown. What is good is washing your brush with a little bit of soap so you sure that no paint is left here and let it dry. And I'm very, very curious where you are, so I'm going to stop recording. In the plan, we'll be painting feathers of pollinators, hummingbirds, 
sunbirds and other bird pollinating flowers. Bye. And see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.